G'day, today's video is um, uh, at day 14 of my fast. I've just started a 24 hour dry fast, a 48 hour dry fast, to help me over the nausea which um, is often reported by fasters at uh, day, around day 15. Um, I always find that helps with the nausea anyway. So um, that's where I'm at. But today's video is going to be brief and it's going to address Questions raised by Marina. Um, Marina asked me, uh, what's my ultimate goal in doing a long fast? Um, and she also asked, is it mainly to do with the liver and lungs? I've got a, um, a list which I'm going to quickly go through. They actually published this list um, under, uh, under the first video in the first playlist called Complete Fast, then um, caption failed, because I, 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 I did fail that fast, although I learned some important lessons. So it's lungs, liver, lifelong insomnia, uh, constipation alternating with diarrhea, which has plagued me for the last 10, 15 years, which I largely attribute to the liver damage done to a life, well, nearly 30 years of hep C. Uh, but that's just um, speculation on my part. Arthritis with bad swelling in the left knee uh, and uh, toe joints. Um, borderline personality disorder. Wild mood swings that have characterised my life, which, um, um, you know, as far as I know, are just as amenable to um, palliation or cure. Um, as any other physical state, because after all, uh, as I explained in my last video, being a, a materialist, not that it, not someone who is acquisitive with material things, but materialist in the sense that I only, I'm a monist materialist. I only believe in one substance in, in phenomena, that is, you know, matter. I don't believe in mind. The brain is, the brain, I believe in the <laughs> I believe that what we call the mind is all seated in the brain. So therefore, um, brain, uh, sorry, um, spiritual states and spiritual malaises, uh, as you might call borderline personality disorder, things that people attribute to mental problems are a subspecies or a subcategory of brain states. Uh, or if they're conditions which subs uh, persist in time, then you could say that there are subspecies of um, neural networks that have been set up and that continue and that, you know, persist and that often plague us and hold us back. You know, one of the things that I do Zen for and that I hold a, a lot of hope uh, in, in regular practice of, of meditation just to reset those uh, neural networks and create new ones um, more spontaneity more spontaneity more fluidity of being anyway back to the shit list um memory loss um loss of mental acuity and focus hypothyroidism i'm underactive thyroid. i've got an underactive thyroid tinnitus a lifelong uh uh, experience of tinnitus since a cracker blew up in my ear when I was a 12 year old boy um, and erectile dysfunction okay there are 10 things that I want to see addressed cured or at least improved throughout the fast so that's the answer to the question it is broader Marina than just li liver and lungs just quickly some things that I want to um, on the, on the preventative side, the, the, the things I've just listed were the, cu or the curative side of the fast, but preventative because you've got to remember fasting has a, um, a very significant preventative um, power. Would be bowel cancer, the thing that killed my dad, um, lung and liver cancer, which I'm uh, set up for, a dead set set up for because of my past. Uh, a lifelong of smoking. I have incipient emphysema. I didn't mention that in the thing that I want cleared up. Now, I definitely want that to go. I don't want to have an oxygen, uh, uh, rely, be reliant on an oxygen machine at, uh, you know, in five or ten years' time. I do have incipient 
emphysema. That can spread even though I've stopped smoking. So I want that tissue, which is little sacs, little, uh, I think they're called uh, areoles, tiniest little sacs at the end of the branching, you know, the bronchia in the lungs, which are just little bubbles of mucus and mm, stuff that hasn't cleaned out, that are just lying there and that rots your lungs. I don't want to live with that. I, I would rather die than actually get emphysema. Um, yeah, it's as clear as that. It's as simple as that. So I want the fast to cure that. Um, uh, yeah. So we're just about at uh, five, or actually over five minutes. I hope that answered the first part of Marina's question. Uh, what's your ultimate goal? That's the ultimate goal. Uh, I'm going to end that now and then do another video tomorrow about how, uh, uh, Marina's next question, how will you know when you've achieved it? When will, I, when will I know that I need to stop? She's also asked questions like, can't you damage uh, other parts of your body while you're doing that? Just very quickly, I think I might address that right now. Um, someone who is of you know, a fairly athletic build can safely do 21 days fasting. But someone like me, who has still got fat reserves, can do 60, 70 days water fasting without peril to, to, to life or limb. Now, I hope I don't have to do 60 or 70 days, but, and I'm not going to do 60 days if I don't need to, of course. And actually, this gets me to the next point. I may as well answer straight away. How do you know? Well, there are several signs. One of them is... If you just look at my tongue now, you'll see a furry white film. As I've explained in earlier videos, this is a buildup of epithelials, which is basically shed skin, which in your normal day-to-day -day living with eating, you chew up and wash away. But when you stop eating, they build up. Now, that's dross. Just well, I would say, I would argue, in the same category as uh, scar tissue on lung and scar tissue, fibrotic, fibrotic, if that's such a word, pre-serotic tissue in the liver is dross, right? It's non-functioning tissue. Now, you see, this is when, you, when the tongue goes clear and goes back to a lovely pink, clean and, uh, appearance with no... Um, rotten taste. Uh, there's this terrible nail polish type acetone sort of taste in your mouth while you're fasting. When that disappears, that's the time to start eating again, very slowly of course, um, because that's when the body has, has no more fuel available. None. Not scar tissue from the lungs, not epithelials from the tongue you see because they're being absorbed straight away as food so i'll close now on day 14 uh, uh happy feast day tomorrow for for everyone who's not fasting which is every <laughs> most of the world <laughs> and um i'll see you uh, uh lickety split with a follow-up video talking about uh, can this affect other organs? Well, I might as well answer that now. <laughs> it's gone to eight minutes. Um, and then, then I'll be done with this. Actually, that will leave then the last part of Marina's question about spiritual benefits. Now, what, what spiritual benefits I hope to gain. So I'll leave that for the next video. But just finally, in conclusion, uh, Marina um, makes the uh, or raises the point that it, to her it seems very harsh physically and can't it damage, you know, uh, your your vitals. You know, well, the answer is no. I've already answered that. Um, doctors, MDs, not crackpot, fringe, um, uh, former Californian hippies, but doctors, some of whom are also Californian, with long hair. Um, uh, will tell you who've looked into this that the average American, for instance, the average American today take off, taken off the street could do 70 days fasting. 
That's how obese the nation is, right? I was obese uh, in, in the obese category about two months ago. I'm now down to about um, 85 kilograms, which is getting to about about normal. Uh, uh, but uh, what when you have fat reserves, that's what the body, that's what the liver uh, uses, and then converts into ketones. Ketones, as I've explained before, ketone bodies perform exactly the same function, in fact, in some ways better than glucose. And glucose is our normal fuel source, right? Which we get from protein and carbs uh, uh, and, and fats. Um, but um, when you stop um, introducing any food into the body, within 18 hours, the glucose in your body is used up. And within about three days, the body switches on to ketone use. So the answer, Marina, is no. You don't do damage to your other organs because the, um, the fat is stripped and the other cells that through autophagy, the, the process of autophagy, which is basically a slavish translation would be self-eating. And it's not eating of the body. It's that when the body consumes the dross, the cells that aren't functioning uh, up to um, an optimum level. Uh, because the fasting environment in the body sets up a, um, a, uh, an, 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 uh, an environment of survival of the fittest, and only the, only the best cells survive, only the best uh, functioning um, uh, parts of the organs survive. So no, the body won't attack its viscera or, its, or the heart, the, in, the body's very protective. It knows to protect those and will do everything via the autonomic nervous system and a whole lot of other internal processes that are unconscious to preserve that. It's even, those vital organs, it's even protective of muscle, uh, which is quite amazing. People think that you're going to lose all this muscle, uh, but it's actually protective of muscle as well. I'm going to sign off now. Um, I hope that answers your question, Marina. Thank you very much for the question. Please keep them coming. Um, generally, people, if you have any questions or observations to make. And uh, next time, I'll talk about what spiritual benefits I hope to gain um, as an atheist, as a fasting atheist, um, in what will be my day 15 or day 16. I'll see you soon. Bye.